The Wii was an absolute revelation when it launched in 2006. After a tough previous generation with the criminally underappreciated GameCube, Nintendo needed a win, and my goodness, did they bounce back in style. Motion controls had officially arrived, or at least they had arrived to a casual mainstream market, normalizing what was essentially waving your arms around like a mad person and trying not to destroy your TV. But destroy TVs it certainly did, despite the numerous warnings about safely securing the Wiimote to your arm. And although it became a haven for horrifying shovelware, the Wii was also home to several total game changers. Even the console menu made an impact, housing a me creation suite and a shop, both of which featured the greatest music ever to grace a games console. On your mark, ready, set, let's go. And so we're going to look back at the 19th of November 2006 Wii launch lineup to see what all the fuss was about. And as I do play through these games alphabetically, I'll be saving the best until last. You know what I mean. I think you know what I mean. Are you ready? Let's do this. It's a game based on that very popular Nickelodeon series up first, a title where Avatar and right cheeky lad Aang is training at the North Pole. A sort of action RPG, you get to play as four different characters and run around completing quests while struggling to beat up wolves. The combat is where Avatar The Last Airbender, or Avatar The Legend of Aang if you want to get European about this, struggles, merely consisting of pressing A to hit and Z to block. You do unlock more skills as you level and can even equip armor you find in the world or purchase from vendors to bolster your character, but these combat abilities require you to swing the Wiimote around and have it register, a goal that's sometimes harder work than it should be. 56% on Metacritic for the Wii version, with the most innovative use of the Wii's features coming in the form of focus moves where you copy patterns to uncover treasure. Shame. We've done this game before. Significantly less pretty than its PS3 big brother, the Wii version of Call of Duty 3 insisted on coming out to play anyway. A World War II first-person shooter, this time you get to fight motion controls as well as Nazis. I honestly felt drunk. It was like learning to walk all over again as I veered from left to right by pointing with the Wiimote and maneuvering with the nunchuck. Grenade practice didn't go much better, with accurate trajectory prediction posing a real challenge, causing my war colleague to tease me and be very rude. What's up with this guy? Could hear the sergeant this time around though, which was nice. Ah, uh, what difference does it make? You'll all probably end up dead anyway. And while I wasn't on board with the bullying of Ferris Bueller, I was just glad not to be the butt of the jokes anymore. Oh, see what bullying can do? If you've ever wanted to live out that scene from Inglorious Bastards where they kill Hitler, then this is the game for you. Spray and pray is the only way. A very nice 69% on Metacritic. Cars is unsurprisingly a movie tie-in for the Disney Pixar's Cars movie. Weirdly, however, it doesn't take place during the events of the film at all, instead being set after. While I will maintain until my dying breath that the Cars movies are rubbish and for stupid babies, the game does let you approximate the closest thing to vehicular intercourse we've seen so far. Brave stuff, Disney. The game is based entirely within the town of Radiator Springs, which you can drive around at will, all two streets of it. You can also crash into other cars for fun. And drive through some fences that are destructible and some that aren't. It has poor draw distance popping and tricky driving as tilting the Wiimote to steer isn't always easy, especially when it comes to slowing down and turning simultaneously. 65% on Metacritic, with many outlets rightly pointing out that this game is for children. Wow, look at all the Gokus! And, and there's a Mewtwo! I know my anime. 
I really don't know my anime. But I've long admired the video game adaptations that attempt to replicate the absolutely bonkers combat featured in the animation. Appropriately, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkai Chi 2, I think, is just that, a fighting game. So I'm off, flying around the planet, which is super cool, and can touch down in various cities to see what's going on, even if it's just one small explorable rectangle. It offered to teach me the controls, but <laughs> I'm alright thanks. I'm gonna get furious and HURT THIS OLD MAN! <laughs> I quickly learned that spamming the same attacks without blocking was the way to go, but my luck ran out when both Green Boy and Goku tasted defeat at the hands of receding hairline Goku. There's definitely something here for fans of Dragon Ball Z, but not for me. It was awarded 72% on Metacritic for its efforts, with IGN saying the general combat will eventually come down to two buttons, making the game amazingly easy to learn, but nearly impossible to fully master. The second of many racing launch games, Excite Truck lets you pick from several powerful vehicles to fly through respective courses as fast as possible. The million dollar question when it comes to driving titles on the Wii is, of course, does it control well? Sort of, yes! You get a real sense of velocity with Excite Truck, accelerating at absurd speeds, narrowly missing trees, and getting so much airtime you need a commercial pilot's license. There are even power ups that deform the terrain around you, and you get star ratings and scores depending on how crazy you get. Usual wee quirks still apply. Oh, Jesus Christ! And you will struggle to turn with a great degree of accuracy when traveling fast, but on the whole, it's a great little racer and achieved 72% on Metacritic. GT Pro Series looks like an old arcade game, and GT Pro Series plays like an old arcade game where the steering wheels come a bit loose. Visual naffness aside, the game is seriously hampered by bad motion controls, and at this point I'm starting to realise that this is a Wii issue as much as it is a developer issue. I picked a Subaru Impreza because I'm a very cool boy and I hit a lot of walls really hard. I then entered the ENJOY CUP, and hang on. I don't think that's okay. Picking the best car I could find, a Toyota People Carrier of course, I was absolutely untouchable in my quest for speed and safety supremacy, consistently delivering my kids to school ten minutes early. And won't you know it, I get a gold cup! GameSpot said, the visual presentation in GT Pro Series looks like something from the Nintendo 64 era and the sound isn't any better, awarding 5.1 out of 10, with the Metacritic ultimately sitting on 41%. Another movie tie-in game, Happy Feet has the distinction of being the only dancing game in the Wii's launch lineup, featuring a returning voice cast including… Uh, Barry B. Benson, you like jazz? citation very much needed on that one, Elijah Wood's Mumble has to win the heart of Gloria and save the Emperor Penguin Nation. How does he do that? By dancing, of course! Except it's really quite uninvolved. You would have thought motion controls would make this DDR clone a little more interesting, but no, it's just swinging your Wiimote in the direction of the prompts. You can probably play it on the toilet. There are other minigames to play, like fishing and sledding, but it didn't sit well with critics at all, earning just 46% on Metacritic, with one outlet calling Happy Feet a new standard in how incomplete a game can be. Ouch. Oh yeah, here we go, sports time! I've played this American football game before, but the day fireworks were a bit much for me. But I've never watched American football, so I'm going to give this everything I've got. It's the 69ers! Oh man, this game is really not very pretty on the Wii. I struggle at the best of times attempting to play US sports games without reading the rules or learning the controls, but I could at least muddle through. Now, however, with motion controls in the mix, this is a whole other universe of confusing. I could tackle well enough, but passing was my kryptonite. I tried to get involved with the other team's scrum, got a penalty, and did my best to run away. In spite of my own shortcomings, Madden NFL 07 reviewed surprisingly well for the Wii, achieving 81% on Metacritic, which means it's the second best reviewed game of any of the launch titles. Shows what I know. 
Another repeat from the PS3 launch lineup, Marvel Ultimate Alliance on Wii is very much the same, the only difference being that it's uglier and has worse controls. Mercifully, you can press the A button to attack instead of waggling the Wiimote like a lunatic, but it all still boils down to pressing one button to beat up baddies before interacting with panels and opening doors. There's a fun superhero story in there to experience, and it's nice to exist in a universe of all the Marvel superheroes and villains and not just the Avengers or X-Men, but that didn't stop the Wii release landing the lowest Metacritic average from seven platforms at 73%. Reviewers praised the strength of the game's roster, but almost universally decried the forced implementation of the Wii's motion controls. I'm still hoping we one day get a game that lives up to that intro cutscene, but there we are. It's another racing game, and I'm fairly sure they just killed a guy. Remarkably not affiliated with the energy drink, Monster 4x4 World Circuit is a by-the-books arcade racer with just okay motion control steering. There are a number of cars to choose from, but why anyone would scroll beyond what is essentially Mr. Bean's Mini on stilts, I don't know. There's some variety to the racing, with barrels you can launch at your competition and speed boosts littered around the course, but it really does all come down to those controls. The game encourages you to do tricks in the air when jumping over ramps, but given you have to spin the Wiimote to pull them off, you know, the thing you're also using to steer, it often ends with you landing in a weird place or veering off in every direction. 51% on Metacritic, and I for one am glad that there are no more racing games to get through. Oh, for God's sake. Last one, I promise. Hi, I'm Emmanuel Vosier. The moves that you and your crew do in the game are meant to stay in the game. In the real world, drive safe, obey the laws of the road, and always wear your seatbelt. How many times do I have to tell you that I cannot be tamed and I will take the lessons learned here to home base car park at 2 a.m.? This visual style might look familiar to returning viewers of this series, as Need for Speed Carbon is indeed a direct sequel to Xbox 360 launch title Need for Speed Most Wanted. Oh, you scared me. But being scared is part of the game here, as you try to take over the city from rival racing crews. You can even take different types of wingmen with you, like my boy Neville here. He just killed a police officer, I, I reckon. I'm grateful to Carbon for constantly reminding me what a burden I am to the state, but this game is not great with the Wiimote. I'm sure there's a case to be made for acclimatizing to the motion controls, but for me, it didn't translate at all, and I was bumping off walls constantly like a right grandma. It even has you connect the nunchuck on startup, browse the menus with the Wiimote held vertically, and then race with it held horizontally which is mixed messaging to say the least. Makes sense then that the Wii release of Need for Speed Carbon is the worst reviewed, sitting at 67% on Metacritic. The final entry in the Rampage series before Midway Games was snapped up and rolled into Warner Bros. Interactive, Rampage Total Destruction is a game about a soda company whose new soft drink has a 100% success rate at turning those who drink it into horrifying monsters. Should have seen it coming, really. I mean, scum soda? Come on. Anyway, you get to control said monsters, and there are a lot of monsters to control, smashing up various stages and fulfilling challenges to earn a high score. It controls horribly, with no clear way of navigating the confusing depth of each environment, resulting in you contorting your arms around before waggling your hands like your god's first attempt at birds. The original titles were great and worked well as arcade games, but this home console release just feels a bit empty, devoid of much to do. It's good news, then, that the original Rampage games are also included, so you can just play those instead. 46% on Metacritic. We've all been there. You're enjoying a nice picnic in the park with your froggy friends when rabbits cursed with the soul and eyes of a Victorian child burst from the ground and a BDSM rabbit snatches you up to take you to his special room. This is a minigame collection ostensibly, and a surprisingly competent one at that. I always wrote rabbits off as some insidious children's distraction from real video games, but I'll hold my hands up and admit I quite enjoyed my time with Rayman Raving Rabbids. First, I was given a bomb and had to run it over to an unsuspecting victim, which is a kind of victory, I suppose. Then there was the cow hammer throw. It was a little tricky to get the timing right, but look at that baby fly. 
It was time to trace around the shape of food next, and of course I drew a Wilson, but the game ended before I could finish. Then there was a dancing game and an on-rails shooter with a western theme. Honestly, I was really rather impressed, and they all controlled competently! Hooray! Bucking the trend, the Wii version of Raving Rabbids scored the highest on Metacritic, with 76%. Still waiting on them to follow through with that BDSM bunny, though. Red Steel is a game about a lady who really likes fish. Oh, look at these fish, Scott. Aren't they pretty? No, as in, she really likes the fish. Look at the one on the left. My favorite. Wait, no, this one, oh, just wow. below. Look. I haven't seen the one, one on the left. This one on the extreme right. I think right. I love them See? all. You, a very cool dude and former bodyguard, are meeting with your girlfriend's father, well-dressed, quite clearly involved in organized crime, for the first time. And naturally, there's trouble afoot. After storming the hotel where you're due to dine, enemies take both your girlfriend and girlfriend daddy hostage, and it's up to you to wobble around from room to room killing people like you've never seen a gun before, let alone used your neck to turn your head. What I'm trying to say is that Red Steel does not control well. You use the Wiimote to steer and aim while the nunchuck walks, but to accurately aim, you must extend your arm to zoom in. This often confuses the sensor, which leaves you facing the wrong way, standing out in the open and absorbing a load of bullets. It's a cool concept at least, even giving you a samurai sword to slash at foes with, but GameSpot put it best when they said it feels more like two cavemen hitting each other with clubs than like two highly trained samurai going at it. The review scores vary wildly from outlet to outlet, but the Metacritic landed on a disappointing 63%. SpongeBob SquarePants Creature from the Krusty Krab is a platforming, racing, flying game where you control Patrick, Plankton, and the eponymous Bob himself in various dream sequences. Yeah, apparently none of the levels are real, which really gives them creative license to just go a bit mental with it all. First up was a racing segment where a bed becomes a car and SpongeBob turns into a spooky man in a completely different art style, speaking like this. Hot dog, daddy -o. My bed is transmogrified into a lean, mean racing machine. Time to put the pedal to the metal, the rubber to the road, and the sponge to the storage! I then did a spot of platforming before hitting a brick wall. This winch would not open. Turns out it's a known issue with the emulator I was using, but given I found a couple of posts from people with this same problem who were presumably playing the real game, it's safe to say that the Wii version of SpongeBob SquarePants' Creature from the Krusty Krab doesn't control all that well. With unresponsive controls and complaints of the game's darker themes and design not matching the cartoon, the title did not go down well at all, achieving just 57% on Metacritic. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz! Ah, oh, yeah! There's just something so bloody lovely about the soundtracks of Japanese video games where you roll monkeys down a hill in a giant ball. Ah, oh, love it. A Japanese video game where you roll monkeys down a hill in a giant ball, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz was a Wii exclusive upon its release, and having played the PS4 remaster last year, I'm here to tell you that somehow, miraculously, the Wii version controls better. And that's to say, it controls quite well. A giant monkey has stolen you and your friend's precious golden bananas, and there's only one way to get them back. You guessed it, rolling monkeys down a hill in a giant ball. You get points based on how fast you make it to the end of each stage and how many bananas you collect along the way, with a boss fight awaiting you at the end of each world. It's simple and fun, and if you like Japanese video games about rolling monkeys down a hill in a giant ball, then you're in for a real treat, friend. 74% on Metacritic, with outlets split once more. Some liked the controls, some didn't, and some thought it was quite short. I liked it, though. Based on a Cartoon Network series I've never heard of, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy sees Grimm's mojo balls stolen, and the only way to get them back is to beat the ever-loving stuffing out of one another. A fighting game, for some reason, your mileage with it is likely going to come down to how much you enjoy or are even aware of the cartoon, with cutscenes playing out between bouts. Can we uh, get a wellness check on Billy, though, please? Your trunk is empty! 
just like my heart. You are loved, mate. Don't worry. Mercifully, it has very limited motion controls, meaning you can mostly play it by pressing the face buttons of the Wiimote. There are power-ups, lives, and environmental hazards, and it all gets suitably chaotic when four characters are on screen at once. I can't tell you if that's a good thing or not, but there's certainly a lot going on. Described as repetitive and with few technical limitations, the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy didn't go down particularly well. 61% on Metacritic. It's honestly shocking to see a Nintendo console launch without a Mario game, but fret not, here's Link to save the day! The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess sees Link battling to prevent Hyrule from being taken over by a corrupted parallel dimension known as the Twilight Realm. He can't just do this in stupid regular Link form, however, so he also takes the guise of a spooky wolf, not only looking cool, but awakening a whole generation of furries. Twilight Princess was originally planned as a GameCube exclusive, but was delayed for a Wii port, which ultimately didn't negatively impact the reception among critics. They bloody loved it. 95% on Metacritic, but it did receive criticism for its motion controls, with outlets calling them forced and tacked on. I obviously didn't play for long enough to get stuck into the meat of the adventure, but I did enjoy awaking in the world's most needy town. Everyone had a job for me. Cats missing, beehive needs knocking down by hawk, of course. There's fishing to be done, a slingshot needs buying, and a parcel needs to be delivered to the Hyrule royal family. Find someone else, mate. I've got too much on my plate. It's a Zelda game, and obviously it's really, really good, but part of me wished I could just sit back and enjoy it without having to use the motion controls. Oh, it's time for a bit more of the radical cool skater boy Birdman! You can't have a console launch without Tony Hawk poking his beak in. It might actually be illegal to exclude him. So here comes Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam, a game where you go downhill as fast as possible and try to beat your opponents. No sign of jam, though. First up is the worst creation suite I've ever seen. What am I even looking at here? This thing is a total nightmare! All of the skaters appear to be fictional, apart from Tony Boy, and honestly, I'm not convinced he's real. Have you seen him? I wonder what he's up to these days. And the story is filled with edgy skater dialogue like this. I used to work at some cookie place in the mall, but like I told Mr. Mooney, the manager, that cookie dough had already exploded when I got there. And as for his grandmother, well, she shouldn't have mouthed off to me like that. Rad stuff, dude. It controls all right, having you play with a horizontal Wiimote and tilting to steer. There's even combat, for some reason. And once you've done enough tricks, you get a speed boost by filling the zone bone before jerking the Wiimote to activate it. No, really, this is true. Taking you around the world to such lovely destinations as San Francisco, Hong Kong, and Edinburgh, the game takes Tony Hawk's skating franchise in a whole new direction. But that's mainly because when you bounce off objects, your character turns around and then you can't turn back around easily because of the tilt controls. A very nice 69% on Metacritic. Have you ever played a Persona game and thought to yourself, man, I wish I could remove foreign objects from a person's ribcage? Good news! Here's Trauma Center Second Opinion, a remake of the Nintendo DS original. Not only are you basically playing a big game of Operation, cutting open arms, removing glass fragments, and cleaning wounds, but you're also wrapped up in a visual novel, filling the medical scrubs of one Dr. Derek Stiles, who by all accounts is just a bit crap at his job. Which is appropriate, really. You did very well, which is it? You can't put the glass back in somewhere else when you remove it, which is a shame, but it makes great use of the Wii functionality while also grounding you in its story and universe. An impressive feat, all things considered. GameSpy called it an essential purchase for Wii owners, with the game achieving 80% on Metacritic. Oh yeah, here we go, sports time! I've played a sports collection before, but... Oh, come on, you know the score. It's We Bloody Sports!
Here's the one you've all been waiting for, the best minigame collection ever and a fixture of youth centres and church groups the world over. As I was emulating, I didn't have access to custom Miis, so I was thrilled to discover our very own Tiny Peter hiding amongst the presets. Tennis has you move automatically, only requiring that you swing your Wiimote to hit the ball. Naturally, you can waggle as fast as possible to look like a crazy person with uh, mixed results, but up to four of you can play and that's fun. Baseball's a little trickier, requiring decent timing when batting as well as determining whether or not it's necessary to properly swing or just jerk your wrist. Pitching's easier then, allowing you to throw wicked curveballs. Ha! <laughs> Take that, idiot! Strike. Next up is bowling, and yes, you can throw it backwards and see your Mies react in horror. I'd say bowling above all else makes you simulate the sport it aims to replicate most accurately. And I love it. I think it's brilliant. Nice throw. You've also got golf, which is really hard due to slightly wonky power readings and all the spectators sounding sarcastic. And finally, there's boxing, where you repeatedly hit a me in the face until it gets brain damage and collapses. This is mainly achieved without tactics, by flailing the Wiimote and Nunchuck back and forth, but it's still a good laugh. I think the power of Wii Sports lies in its use of your custom Miis. While I didn't have any here, it was amazing stepping out onto the field in baseball to see a random lineup of your school friends, or punching the hell out of Grandma. Given the undeniable lasting impression the game has left on popular culture, it's kind of unthinkable for it to have only received 76% on Metacritic. But we all know the truth, don't we? That 76% brings the total average score of the Wii's launch lineup to 66%. Big thank you to Mr. Robot Monkey for suggesting the average of all the review scores at the end there. Nice idea. So there we have it. Every single Wii launch game sort of reviewed in 2020. Was there a particular favourite that you had? And why was it Zelda or Wii Sports? Why not follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with more of these playing every videos and uh, also like the video. I'd really appreciate that. Why not also subscribe to the channel? There's so many things you could do. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.